When the framers of the Constitution met together in Philadelphia, the state of the country wasn't exactly going well. The 13 former colonies were now 13 independent states, bound together under the Articles of Confederation. The Articles were more of a political and military alliance rather than a union. They didn't establish a court system or a president. Congress was unicameral, required a unanimous vote to pass a law, and even then had little authority to enforce laws. With the turmoil of debtors' prisons, farmers not able to pay taxes, and the outbreak of Shays' Rebellion, reforming the Articles became obvious. In response, delegates from the 13 states gathered in late May of 1787 at Constitutional Hall to create a more perfect union. The root problem of the Articles of Confederation was their lack of sovereignty. But more to the point of this channel, the Articles did not establish an executive branch. At the Constitutional Convention, however, the framers agreed to creating the American presidency. So the primary question is, how was the Electoral College originally intended to function when selecting a president? Secondary questions to be answered include, what were all the methods discussed by the framers to choose a president? How did the state delegations vote regarding the different methods? And finally, what was the timeline of debating and voting concerning the selection of the president? A timeline of the debates and voting at the Constitutional Convention related to the appointment of the president is as follows. The first day of the convention began on May 25, 1787. This timeline graph indicates all debating and voting regarding the selection of the president for the entirety of the convention, which spanned from late May to the middle of September. The gray data points show debate mentions, while the black shows votes held on various methods. Early debates on how to choose the president were more suggestive and exploratory. They included the popular vote, the legislature, a body of electors, and governor's methods. The popular vote selects the president by a majority of all votes in a national election. The governor's method would have the governors of each state meet to deliberate and choose the president. The legislature method would allow one or both chambers of the legislature to deliberate and choose the president. This is essentially a parliamentary system. And lastly, the elector's method would create a body of electors, the same size as the legislature, to meet at the seat of government, deliberate, and choose the president. The topic of choosing a president was tabled as the delegates focused on building the legislative branch, as seen in this gap in the data on the timeline. After the convention agreed to the Great Compromise and created a bicameral legislature, the delegates turned their attention to how to choose the president. While the different methods were debated, the delegates repeatedly opted for the legislature method as it was tied to the Virginia and New Jersey plans. However, this violated the separation of powers. On July 19th, the convention passed an electors' convention method, where a body of electors would gather at the seat of government to choose a president. A few days later, however, they reverted back to the legislature method. This marks the only time the convention passed an appointment method other than the legislature method and the eventual electoral college. The convention realized they were at an impasse, so they tasked the third committee of eleven to find a solution. When the third committee of eleven returned to the full convention, they presented their solution. Their solution was to blend the electors and legislature methods. Electors would meet in their respective state capitals, vote for two candidates, and if no candidate received a majority, the Senate would choose from one of the top five nominees. Delegates assumed candidates would rarely receive a majority. As George Mason would claim, quote, 19 times in 20, the president would be chosen by the Senate. After some further debate, the Senate lost selection powers and was replaced by the House of Representatives, but voting equally by state delegations to choose from the top five candidates. So in effect, the original design the framers created was a parliamentary system. The slight difference being the legislature would select the president but was limited to the five candidates nominated to them by the electors of the several states. Simply put, the electors nominate and the House selects. Regarding the debate over presidential selection, the convention consists of two phases. The first phase is all the debate and voting leading up to the third committee of 11, which formed on August 31st, and the second phase is everything after the committee's report. The first phase may be considered as a battle of different ideas. Different methods were proposed, and many variations of each method were also debated and voted on, whereas in the second phase, the debate is focused on the proposal presented by the committee, where electors nominate candidates, and the legislature selects the president. Overall, debate on the various methods spanned the length of the convention. 
with the first mentioned by James Wilson on June 1st, until the final vote on September 6th that passed the original version of the Electoral College. All in all, debate took place on 15 specific days, with 191 separate debate mentions and 26 different votes. One debate data point derives from a single delegate addressing the convention and advocating for or against a particular method, as indicated in Madison's notes. For example, this paragraph shows James Madison opposing the legislature method. One vote is each time a delegate motioned for a vote and the state delegations voted on a particular method, as seen here where the convention delegates voted on the elector's method. It should be noted with voting data there are numerous irregularities. Because Rhode Island never attended the convention, New Hampshire did not arrive until July 24th, and New York lost its quorum leaving Alexander Hamilton all alone, voting totals may be slightly skewed. This example shows Rhode Island, New Hampshire, and New York not voting in the tally of eyes and nose on July 19th. This means only 10 states voted on these particular methods. In the first phase, from May to August, the appointment method most discussed was the legislature method. This may have been through the Senate, the House of Representatives, or a joint session of both chambers. It was debated 65 times with nine votes. The second most prominent appointment method was the elector's method with 29 debate mentions, six votes, and was also briefly passed by the convention as the method to select the president. The popular vote comes in third place with 30 debate mentions and two votes. It never passed as a method to select the president. In terms of debating, the elector method and the popular vote both held ratios of two advocations to one opposition, while the legislature method was roughly split. Concerning voting, however, the legislature method performed the best, as it averaged six states voting for and 4.4 states voting against. The elector's method fared poorly, only averaging 3.6 states voting for and 6.3 states voting against the method. Meanwhile, the popular vote was ironically the most unpopular system debated at the Constitutional Convention. Holding two votes, only the state of Pennsylvania voted for the system twice, and Delaware voted in favor once. The popular vote averaged 1.5 votes for and 9 votes against. Other methods discussed were the governor's method with four debate mentions and one vote, as well as the state legislature's method with only a single debate mention. To reiterate the data of the convention, the three dominant methods discussed in the first phase were the legislature, the electors, and popular vote methods. All of the original data depicted in this episode is available in the book, On the Framers' Method, how the Electoral College and the Hamilton Method Can Defeat Populism and Tyranny. The link to Amazon is posted in the description. The primary source to build this data set was Max Ferrand's, The Records of the Federal Convention of 1787. To sum up the episode, the framers of the Electoral College built a system where electors would nominate a list of five candidates. In most cases, the framers assumed no candidates would achieve a majority resulting in the House of Representatives voting by state delegation to choose the president. Most of the debate revolved around the legislature choosing the president, along with the electors and popular vote. When the convention could not decide on which method to select the president, they formed the third committee of 11 to find a solution. The result was the second great compromise where the committee blended together the electors and legislature methods to form the Electoral College. The origin story of the Electoral College will continue in Part 2, where we will delve deeper into the Second Great Compromise, the evidence to support the Framer's design of electors nominating and the House selecting the President, and overall theory of the Framer's preference for building an electoral system based in decentralization and deliberation. Thanks again for watching The Framer's Method. If you want to support this channel, please like and subscribe on our social media platforms, and consider supporting this channel on your preferred membership platform, all of which can be found on the website at framersmethod.com.